समस्त जन कल्याणी निरत करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विस्वर वसुदेवसुत देव कंस चाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु ओके हरि ओम टुडे वी विल बिगिन वर्स 23 एंड द लास्ट वर्स वी हैड दिस ग्रैंड प्रॉमिस बाय द लॉर्ड दैट योग क्षेमम वहां में हम नाउ दिस योग क्षेम वहां में हम इज ऑफन कोटेड बाय पीपल बट दे डोंट अंडरस्टैंड द प्री कंडीशंस दैट कृष्णा हैज गिवन आउट अबाउट हाउ बाय डूइंग व्हाट कैन यू गेन दिस बेनिफिट of krishna looking after your yoga kshema which we did yesterday now ye pyanya devata bhakta yajante shraddha yanvita ha te pe maam eva kaunteya yajantya vidhi purvakam now this verse translates as even those devotees who endowed with faith worship other gods worship me alone o son of kunti kontiyas o son of kunti by the wrong method hmm? now by the wrong method dekho if you are worshiping you are worshiping other gods that also is karma right now that karma you will get the results but the results will be much lesser than worshiping in the sublime higher manner as par brahma parmatma now what does other gods mean now those devotees who endowed with faith they do it very faithfully you know all the rituals they do the devatas they worship <coughs> now devatas over here again as gurudev translates as the giving potential wherever you can gain what you are looking for materially wherever materially you want to gain something knowledge worship saraswati okay uh, money wealth worship lakshmi okay so, so those kind of things so when you worship <coughs> other devatas he says for gaining something hmm, he says that you are still worshiping me alone just like in a dream 30 people are dreaming <coughs> all 30 are dreaming differently so in everybody's dream whatever is projected is projected by the dreamer himself so the lord says that here they worship me alone though they do not know it you know swami dayanand has said that they worship me alone but the people who are worshiping other gods they are ignorant of the fact that they are worshiping the param brahma through these channels through these channels they are worshiping param brahma but they are ignorant of it now if you are worshiping in an ignorant manner then you do not know the correct method of worshiping that is why the lord says that but by wrong methods a vidhi purvakam a vidhi purvakam that means the vidhi that should be applied for worshiping para brahma the attitude of devotion which should apply to worship para brahma is not there so then you will only get those results which limited results lower kind of result results you will get hmm? now see there are orators and teachers ye do alag alag cheeze hain ha please remember there are orators and then there are teachers hmm? now the teacher unfolds to you yourself the teacher is able to make you recognize yourself realize yourself know who you really are or what is your true identity that is the job of a teacher and the 
orator only states beautifully he states beautifully that's why a lot of teachers pass off as very good teachers but they are only good orators they do not lift your mind they are not able to pull you out of your ignorance huh? and so the orator cannot help lift you dekho lift kaun kar sakta hai ye bhi socho aap somebody who is higher than you can only lift you the very word lift means from the lower to the higher isn't it so somebody who is standing on a higher platform than you is only the person who is able to lift you but if you are just an orator as gurudev used to say tape recorder if you are just a tape recorder and you are just playing what is recorded then you are not higher than the students whom you are teaching therefore you the students remain on that ignorant level so that is a difference over here and you have to remember that difference but even those people they to worship me alone says the lord ha huh? so like gurudev used to say any brahmachari is oya who used to leave the mission gurudev used to say that they are doing only my work ultimately they are doing my work they think that they are doing for themselves but they are actually serving me they are ignorant of serving me so their attitude is not right their worshiping attitude is not right so their karma phala will be according to what they think they are doing usme aham bhav aa gaya na kartritva bhav aa gaya aham bhav aa gaya but if you are doing for the guru if you do it with the attitude i am serving my teacher i am serving my guru then the attitude is different then with that act you are worshiping the teacher with that act you are worshiping your guru and guru worship para brahma worship you know not the body of a guru you are not worshiping the body of a guru or the feet or the sandals of the guru through that form you are seeing para brahma and you are worshiping para brahma so therefore he says that that is a different huh the platform on which you worship is different so understand this difference between the two kinds of worship one is wor- surrendering every act of worship to the lord himself desiring only chitta shuddhi desiring only antakaran shuddhi okay and the other is when you worship for material gains oh lord give me this oh lord give me that oh lord give me this isko kar do isko kar do isko kar do hai na jaise hum log karte hain that is worshiping devatas but that will only have a limited phal aur jo phal milega bhi that will be limited in time and space after some time it will change it is not a permanent thing it is not a ananta sukham that you can gain by worshiping the para brahma parmatma ha huh? so this is one now here come to the next verse aham he sarva yagnanam bhokta cha prabhu reva cha na tu mam bhijanante tatve na tasya vantite now this verse says for i alone am the enjoyer in the, that worship and the lord of all sacrifices also and sacrifice but they do not know me in essence see they do not know me in essence ka kya matlab hai they make the same effort you know the same effort is required to worship the lord or worship the devatas but here he is saying that they worship the devatas through the devatas they are worshiping me alone because i alone am the enjoyer in them listen nobody nothing even the yakshas or rakshasas or anybody can not even feel the enjoyment if they not have they do not have the ansh of para brahma in them it is para brahma parmatma that enables you to enjoy 
enables you to feel right so if he is not actually there you cannot experience anything also your senses your body body mind and intellect cannot even experience so he says i alone am the enjoyer but these people and i am the lord of the sacrifice so para brahma is the lord of the sacrifice but they do not know the higher nature huh? his higher nature is something which they must understand but they do not know acha another thing is but they do not know me in essence he says they do not know me in essence essence means what dekho let's come to the essence the lord is so intimately connected with you he is so intimately blended in your body mind and intellect that you do not even recognize him you cannot recognize him you know something that is with you all the time you take it for granted ki ye to hota hi hai aisa to hota hi hai it is only very seldom that you recognize the presence of that thing which is with you all the time like for instance the lord is with you all the time breathing for you think about it are you breathing you cannot help breathing you cannot stop breathing try you will be breathe and you cannot stop breathing so who is breathing when it is not in your control your breath is not in your control many times you are not even con- most of the time let me say you are not even conscious that you are breathing you are doing so many so many other things so think about it who is breathing for you who is making your heart beat he is available at all times otherwise you will not be able to breathe you will not be able to eat you will not be able to live while sleeping hmm? now when you even the eyes cannot see without his help the nose cannot smell the ears cannot hear huh? you do not even notice him but he is working through these senses to make you cognitive to make you understand to make you know it is his doing not yours not yours but that is what he is saying that they do not know me in essence he is always there he is not there only the grace of the lord is always with you gurudev used to say he is not there only on christmas and diwali don't think the lord grace only comes on that little time on christmas and diwali 24 hours all the time 24/7 he is with you for you working through you right and that is why he is saying that I, he is taken for granted because they do not know me in essence and hence they fall hence they fall means they do not attain the highest they never attain the highest because they are not seeking the highest they are seeking material gains through all these worship of different different devatas they are seeking material gains so they will get material gains but material gains are short lived after some time they finish they are not there after some time huh? so the lord means to say that i alone am the light of consciousness in which the results of joy and sorrow happen in which the results of trying to know something knowledge happens huh? and but still you don't know him you don't know him i enjoy through you no doubt but the actual enjoyer is the lord himself the medium is your body your mind your intellect through you who is enjoying who is partaking of it all the lord himself okay come to the next verse 
यांति देव व्रता देवान पितृन यांति पितृ व्रता भूतान यांति भूते ज्या यांति मध्या जिनो पे माम ओके ही सेज द वर्शिपर्स ऑफ द देवास और गॉड्स गो टू द देवास to the pitris or ancestors go the ancestor worshipers to the bhutagana or the elements go the worshipers of the bhuta but my worshipers come to me okay now in this verse you see this verse underlie underlines the psychological truth of our minds and intellect what is the psychological truth of the mind and intellect that is that as you think so you become that is the psychological truth as you think so you become so in whichever direction your reverence goes in whichever direction you worship something some personality some knowledge or anything at all whatever you worship thinking that that thing is higher than you and you are all inspired that means you have respect and reverence and worship and devotion to that object you will slowly slowly channelize your mind and your thoughts to that again and again and again and then you turn to become him you turn to become that only hmm? okay the examples you have seen in a family the younger brother imitating the elder brother it happens in all families that the older child is imit whatever he says whatever he does the younger one also wants to do if he says i'll drink milk the younger one will also say okay i'll drink because the elder one is doing it now constantly the younger one is mentally in a worship form for the elder one and whatever the elder does he thinks that is the right thing to do and he automatically keeps doing it so then what happens the younger brother becomes slowly slowly he adopts ways and means that the elder brother is adopting similarly parents and children you will notice that children take on mannerisms forms thought patterns behavior patterns from the parents it is not just dna it is not just dna when they see the parents behaving in a certain way they understand that as the way of life they understand that as that you can behave like this you should behave like this or this is the correct format this is how everybody in life should do so without your teaching the children what to do by behavior by speech you are already doing what the parents are doing and strangely enough as you grow old as you grow more and uh, more older you slowly slowly start thinking the way your parents used to think you start doing what your parents had to have inculcated through their behavior through their speech to you this in uh, in vedanta is called bhramar keet nyay vivek chudamani has the example ha huh? bhramar shankara has given it in vivek chudamani very categorically now the bhramar keet nyay is that the that the lava of the bhramar is inside a hole you know they make these little holes on walls and things in which they put their larva now that larva uh, tries to come out bhramar bahar baitha hai and every time it tries to come out the bhramar stings him so he goes in back again then again he tries to come out and the bhramar stings him again he goes back you know so the father is not letting the son come out now the father is sitting at the mouth of the little uh, little crevice in the wall and he is constantly looking at the keet inside 
एंड द कीट इज कॉन्स्टेंटली लुकिंग एट द भ्रमर आउटसाइड तो वो उसको देखते 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 ही टर्न इन टू अ भ्रमर और वो धीरे धीरे उसको ही इज फोकस्ड ऑन द भ्रमर ऑल द टाइम द भ्रमर इज सिटिंग आउटसाइड कॉन्स्टेंटली लुकिंग एट हिम सो एनी थिंग दैट योर थॉट्स आर डायरेक्टेड टू वर्ड्स ऑल द टाइम थिंकिंग इट थिंकिंग ऑफ इट इन अ वर्शिपफुल एटीट्यूड यू स्लोली स्लोली टर्न इन टू दैट that happens between a guru shishya also the shishya is so focused on his guru he is so focused on what the guru is teaching what the guru is trying to inculcate what the guru is trying to say that slowly 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 he himself becomes a guru right this is the great difference dekho kuch logon ne paras aur guru ko compare karte hain log ha ke paras turns Uh, turns iron into gold right that is the effect of paras but that is not a right comparison because the guru does not turn the shishya into gold he does turn in the beginning he changes the complete life of the shishya he changes the complete thinking of the shishya he changes the life quality of the shishya he changes the aims in life of a shishya okay His behavior patterns, everything changed. Okay, now ये तो पारस इफेक्ट हुआ. Fine, but Guru does a little more than that. He creates another teacher like him, which is one step ahead of Paras. So they say the Guru is better than the Paras. He creates another one like him. That is the Brahmar Kiit Nyaay. That the Brahmar कीड़े को भ्रमर बना देता है दैट सो द भ्रमर कैन फ्लाई आउट भ्रमर कैन गो एंड कलेक्ट हनी फ्रॉम सो मेनी फ्लावर्स इट कैन गो एंड डू वॉट द टीचर वॉज डूइंग वॉट द फादर वॉज डूइंग राइट सो टू क्रिएट अनदर जस्ट लाइक योर सेल्फ इज द मेरेकल ऑफ द टीचर एंड दिस इज वॉट दिस वर्स इज ट्राइंग टू से नाउ यांते देव व्रता देवान पितरन यांते देखो इट सेज वर्शिपर्स ऑफ द देवास और गॉड्स गो टू द देवास नाउ सी देव वर्शिप मेनी पीपल सेज व्हाई डू मेनी मेनी पीपल ऑफ डिफरेंट डिफरेंट रिलीजन इवन एथीस्ट दे से दैट व्हाई डू यू वर्शिप देवतास why do you worship devatas but they themselves worship devatas dekho in kurg kurg is a place in karnataka it is a hill station in karnataka huh? now over there near bangalore upper side of bangalore now over there they worship uh, what are what are called mains m a n e s mains now mains means spirits spirits of ancestors are called mains now they worship spirits of ancestors and it's a big festival in kurg and lot of people worship only the mains thailand go to thailand outside every house they have a little place where they light divas they you know put something to drink and a fruit to eat and offer flowers and all that to their ancestors pitris हर घर के आगे होता है वहां पर सो दैट इज अ प्लेस ऑफ वर्शिप इन तमिलनाडु वेर एवरीबडी सेज आई एम एन एथीस्ट हाँ तमिलनाडु में सब कहते हैं मैं मैं तो एथीस्ट हूँ मैं तो एथीस्ट हूँ तो वो एथीस्ट क्या करते हैं वहां पर दे गो एंड दे वर्शिप ऑन द दे गो एन लाइट अ कैंडल दे प्लेस फ्लावर्स दे प्लेस फ्रूट ऑन द ग्रेव ऑफ द एंसेस्टर्स और द फ्यूनरल प्लेसेज और समाधि ऑफ द एंसेस्टर तो व्हाट आर यू डूइंग वो कहते तो हैं कि आई वी डोंट वर्शिप एंड बट व्हाट आर यू डूइंग दिस इज वर्शिप ओनली इज इट आप हाथ जोड़ रहे हैं आप दीवा जला रहे हैं अगरबत्ती जला रहे हैं फल फूल चढ़ा रहे हैं इट इज वर्शिप उपासना ही तो है सो ही सेज दैट द वर्शिपर्स ऑफ द देवास गो टू द देवास बट द लॉर्ड सेज इवन थ्रू दैट काइंड ऑफ वर्शिप they are worshiping me alone 
but since they are ignorant of the fact that they are worshipping me, their results they get are also limited. The results they get are also limited. Huh? Devatas mein kya kya aata hai? Spirits aati hai. Ancestors ki atmai aati hai. Rakshas gan aate hai. Yaksh aate hai. Or gan. Dekho gan jo hai na. Gan means a group. The word gan means a group. Okay. Even in Ganesh Puja, if you are worshipping Ganesh as Parabrahma, you are unka Upanishad Parte, which Ganesh Ji ko samarpit hai. So, Atharvashish Upanishad. If you are reading that and worshipping Ganesh as Parabrahma, then you are worshipping the Lord Himself, or uska result is moksha. But if you are worshipping Him as Ganapati, जैसे महाराष्ट्र में होगा गणपति बप्पा मोरिया और उनका आप उनका आवाहन करते हैं उनको बिठाते हैं फिर उनका विसर्जन करते हैं ऑल दैट यू डू तो दैट गणपति इज नथिंग एल्स बट अ वेरी एलिवेटेड स्पिरिट देखो दयानंद जी कहते हैं कि गणपति गण आ द ग्रुप ऑफ इंद्रियास आपका नाक कान आंख मुंह स्किन ऑल दैट सो दिस इज अ ग्रुप who is the Adhishthan Devata of this group? That is Ganapati. Ganapati. He is the Lord of the senses, of all your senses. He is the one who collects, helps you to collect enjoyment for all these senses. Eyes, nose, ears, mouth. In ke liye wo collect karte hain. Cheez hain. To jab aap Ganapati puja karte hain, Ganapati as such. Huh? the lord of the senses, then you are worshipping him for material gains. People sthapna karte hain ghar mein ki mere dukh le jau aur sukh de jau. What is that? Material gains. Material even in the sense whether it is a situation or it is a material object or it is wealth or it is whatever you are trying to gain. You are trying to gain something in the material world. That is the worship of Ganapati. So that also, he is an exalted spirit, but the gains are of the senses, the gains are materialistic, and those gains are also temporary. They are not moksha. They will not lead you to moksha. So this is the difference between Ganapati Puja and Ganesh Puja. Hmm? So this... Uh, <clears throat> okay, now... Hmm. Now the Bhutas. Gurudev says that Bhutas, huh, uh, uh, huh, sorry, Ganapati ka also ye hai, you know, you live in that loka of the Pitrus because you know, aap Pitru, uh, haan, Pitrus ka jab karte hai, Pitru puja, Ganapati chod, ab aap Pitru puja jo karte hai, ancestral puja. Ancestral puja means worshipping anything that has gone or it is ancient your ancestors your father huh? your mother your father hmm? but you are in a different world but you mentally keep living mentally in space in that world where your ancestors have gone so you are thinking about that and that so you are worshipping ancestors, but not the Parabrahma. You got it? You are worshipping ancestors, but not the Parabrahma. If you archaeologists, kya hai? Jo an antique buildings, buildings, khod ke nikalte and all that, they are all the time thinking of people who lived in the 10th century, in the 5th century BC. So where are they living? Archaeologists are also, their mindset is what? They are mentally living in the 10th century and 5th century BC all the time. Gurudev used to say that, you know, this Deva worship is that, Pitru worship is that, that jis bhi Devata Devi ko aap worship kar rahe hain, wo aapko phal dega, but you are not worshipping the Parabrahma 
Paramatma who is all pervading, us hisab se aap worship nahi kare. So the attitude in worship counts. Huh? The attitude in worship counts very much. With whatever attitude you are worshipping, that the Lord accepts. Or usi ko, usi ka aapko karam phal milta hai. Hmm? So you are worshipping mighty fields. Okay. Aap apne dance guru ko worship kar rahe. He will make you into a very good dancer. That is all he can give you vardan. Hai na? You are concentrating on your business, 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 profit, profit, profit. Din raat aap wohi worship kar rahe hai. He is a devata. That business or that factory or that whatever it is, is the devata that you are worshipping day and night by putting effort into it. So that devata will give you phal. But that phal will be material and limited again. Huh? So they are constantly contemplating on the Pancha Mahabhuta. Huh? Bhuta Seva, or Devata Seva. Bhutas are, Gurudev translates them as the elements. He says all the elements are the Pancha Mahabhuta, they are called. And with the worship of the Pancha Mahabhuta, you are worshipping the mighty forces of nature. And whichever force you are worshipping, that force will give you the result. Huh? Uh, so, idhar dekhye. Now, the devas, we, uh, devas represent the various sense organs, Gurudev says. And many times you use the word, like you say, uh, you know, aapki everyday language, mein Gurudev has given examples in your text. He says to ax, to ax somebody, you are using what? Ax the tree. When you say ax the tree, ax is a noun. You are using it as a verb, isn't it? Huh? Then you say spanner or you say you steer yourself from in this direction. You steer yourself in this direction. You are using the steering in your speech. Pen these lines, Gurudev says. Pen these lines. Sab aapke text mein hai. Pen these lines when he's, you say. Pen these lines means what? You are using the instrument to express the action. You are expressing your words in the instrument to express an action which is a verb. You are using a noun, noun to act as a verb. Many times nouns and verbs are interchangeably used in the English language. So here when he says devatas, devatas are the giving potential of in any field. So when you are worshipping a devata or devi, it is not necessarily yaksha, rakshas or what. It can be a minister in a ministry. It can be the secretary of a ministry. Aap unko jaake plea lagaiye, kahiye, maangiye kuch. To wo aapko dete hain, isn't it? Consistently aap maangte hain, mera ye kaam kar dije, mujhe iski bahut zarurat hai. He will reward you. That is the meaning of the Devata. So in that field alone, you will get the reward and a limited reward. Hmm. So Pitri is also, Pitri is ka ye hai ke they do not, there is no geographical place where they go. But it is said that Pitri is when, when ancestors, when your ancestors passes away, he does not immediately take a form. Many times he does. But many times he doesn't. So then what happens to the spirit? The mind equipment remains in a spirit form and enjoys many things in a spirit form or goes to a loka where he enjoys the effects of his punyas and then he comes back. So when you Pitri worship, karte hai, to again, hmm, you are using a uh, ancient orthodox way of worshipping the spirit of your ancestor. So you go towards the ancestor yourself in the same loka that he had gone. That means all your actions become like the ancestors. That's all it means. In short, all your actions will start becoming like Pitri's. 
with pitri worship you rever them you start behaving like them okay now then the next huh uh, worshipers of bhutas reach bhutas huh now dekhiye bhuta jo hai wo main abhi aapko explain kar chuki hu so let me not do this if you Acha, all this again i have to say you know all this is contemplative literature in contemplative or spiritual literature you do not take the exact word meaning but you take the import of the word meaning you know what does it mean what does it indicate what does it imply ha huh? what are the nuances of that word and accordingly you interpret them and that is how shankara also does in his bhashya okay so this is all done and now uh, see gurudev has given these examples he says bhut are the secular scientists who try to observe codify and systematize the observed knowledge of physical nature now the behavior of things how do you study the behavior of things worship zoology you will get to know about animals birds bees insects this that and but worship what does worship means consistent effort in that one subject you will gain the knowledge of that subject chemistry consistent effort in that subject will gain you that subject but if you do not make the effort even in these then you will not gain them the entire atharva veda is gives you how to put in effort to get material gains that is why many times it is not even considered a veda because it talks of gaining materially you know it gives you because that is for people like us ke hum log har waqt i want this i want this i want this so it gives you methods of how to reach there and how to do that hmm? now then um, acha we have done this krit bhramar nyay we have done uh one thing about geeta which you must always i have to mention this and say geeta is the one scripture in the world that demonstrates methods of how to gain what you are looking for also gyan dena ek baat hai or how to gain what you are looking for in life that is another thing that is the practical demonstration of methods by which you can not only gain from the outer world but even if your aim is the highest which is moksha how to gain moksha so it is a gyan vigyan sanchita knowledge गीता नॉलेज इज ज्ञान विज्ञान संचय सो ओनली आपको कहें कि आकाश पुष्प लेके आइए तब आपकी बीमारी ठीक होगी अभी हाउ डू यू गेट द आकाश पुष्प सो द इलनेस नेवर गेट्स ऑल राइट बिकॉज द टीचर और द वेद देयर हैज नॉट टोल्ड यू हाउ टू गेट दैट पुष्प गीता डज दैट दैट इज व्हाई इट इज अ वर्ल्ड स्क्रिप्चर बिकॉज इट डज नॉट teach you hindu methods of doing things there nothing hindu about it it only teaches it is a human being it is a science of managing the human mind to gain the highest it is a science of managing the human mind body and intellect to gain the ultimate benefit that life can provide okay so here we stop and verse 26 we'll take next time the verse 26 is a very interesting verse very often quoted also very often misunderstood also so we will do this verse next time om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamevaya purnameva vashishyate ओ शांति 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 हरि ओम 
श्री गुरभ्यो नम हरि ओम